We are live, guys. We are live <laughs> uh, on our 62nd episode of Umbra Coffee. Uh, we are fueled by coffee all the time and some other uh, liquids. And we have a representative of, of uh, the, the other liquid owner, T Commerce owner now, uh, Matt Brailsford. Hi, Matt. How are Hi. you? Not bad. How are you? Yeah, we are very good. Callum, uh, you're still abroad, far, far away. Uh, how are you? Yeah, You've been still... busy this week? Oh, I have, yeah. I have been doing quite a few things. Yeah, it was. Not going to tell us though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I think we're going to talk about them, so so we'll we'll wait a little while. Marty, yeah. you've been snowboarding a lot, right? Yes, I've been I've been snowboarding for the last weekend. Uh, I'm trying to use winter as much as I can. And uh, interesting point is that we have a 12 degrees today, and the snow is still uh, lying on the on the slope when I'm where, where I am snowboarding. So that's that's really great. Wow. Let's stay nice. at it. And Matt, what what's your activity lately? You've been also busy, of course, uh, around development. But are you still doing some other magic uh, with I don't know hardware and other stuff like that? Um, I always have projects on and off. I kind of like, I, I work in kind of phases. So right now I'm heavy on kind of curd and doing bits of T-commerce stuff. Uh, but then if I feel like I'm getting bogged down with, with curd, then I might go and do a hardware project. So I, I like to kind of flip from project to project. And I, I find that helps kind of, um, kind of make my mind go in a diff different direction. And then when I come back, it's, it's kind of a little bit refreshed. So I'm not on a hardware hit at the moment. So I'm just focusing on, on curd at the moment. We can definitely use it as a, as a tip for productivity, which was yeah. also mentioned in the in the in the topic of this episode. Because most a lot of people are asking how you are finding time for doing so many things, right? And it's just a matter of priorities, right? And focus uh, uh, around specific topic and area for for the time, and yeah. doing it right. <laughs> um, Frederick shared a link on Twitter. I'll have to find it um, about. Um, how a lot of entrepreneurs have a lot of projects on the go all at the same time. Um, so you spread your focus and it really helps kind of uh, move from project to project, solving different problems. And it can actually help come back to an original project and you've got a, a different way of thinking about things. So it might sound like I'm doing a lot of things all the time, but I'm usually working on things individually in little, little segments. So it's a good approach. It works for me anyway. Yeah, it's fun. I also found that multitasking is is not it's not good for me and whatever it's lined up it's always easier to, to yeah. just find myself in in in, in the specific area. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 speak about Umbraco stuff. Uh, Umbraco is also uh, busy with with doing uh, new and old things and uh, any other activities. And uh, first of all, we wanted to mention uh, a, a contest or, or competition. It's a, a digital Europe's future. Um, Unicorn Award. I think that it's a perfect award for Umbraco, right? It's just tailored to be an Umbraco award. It never has to be. <laughs> so, so yeah, Niels uh, shared that they yeah. were uh, they were chosen from between uh, thirty two thousand companies already. So they are now in the top sixteen uh, nominees. And I don't know where where the exact announcements of the winner will be, but that's that's already great uh, information because yeah. it it means that Umbraco passed and beaten uh, more than three, three, 31,000 companies, which were also nominated or taking part in this competition. And I'm really curious about to, <laughs> how it will be if Umbraco will win the unicorn company, future unicorn award. So yeah, that's, that's great to hear. And it also proves that Umbraco is, is, is more yeah. recognized, I think, right? Yeah. More visible. Definitely. The other interesting thing, which I pointed out on the, the comments on this, was uh, for the really eagle-eyed people that actually went and looked at the article, Mbraco has shown off the new identity. Um, I think it's the first time we've actually seen it out in the wild. And, uh, well, one, it looks really cool, but on the thing you were just saying, Martin, it, it looks a bit more mature and it looks a kind of a little bit, um, it kind of sets them up to be one of these bigger companies, I think, um, maybe maybe puts them more on a par with some of these other competitors. Um, if you click onto the actual article, there's some slides with some really nice shapes and branding that um, that I believe uh, Klaus showed off many months ago on the, uni the Unicorner. Um, but it's just really great to see, actually, that, that they've come along so far. And I think we're, we're going to start seeing more of this with the new umbraco.com and all of that stuff. There we go. Best of breed. Mm -hmm. um, all of these, all of these, these kind of graphics looks pretty cool, in my yeah. opinion. 
Yeah, Matt, Matt, what's your opinion about it? Uh, really good. Um, I'm liking the fact that it's just getting more kind of polished and you're seeing it across kind of the board. So historically, things might have got gotten worked on in areas. So like maybe the Umbraco website was updated, uh, but then everything else kind of looked like it had been left behind. But um, with this new brand, I can see everything kind of coming together. So even with the uh, V8 being updated to use the same color scheme, there's a lot of consistency and uh, consistent yeah. in message as well. So really good. Yeah, I wonder what the plan is for Power and Braco because that still still looks kind of <laughs> back with V6 or yeah. V7. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure, maybe. I'm sure it'll get there. It just takes time. Yeah, <laughs> and it's still our. Uh, it's already, people who are, are a part of the community, they they probably can see the other bits uh, ahead of time and and yeah but it will be good to keep the consistency across the the yeah. channels and and we, we even during the the retreat or uh, or code garden last year we found that somewhere the old logo wa was used right the the orange one instead of blue ones etc so yeah being consistent is, is great from the visibility perspective mm -hmm. and matt you've mentioned the the v8 and and also niels is is sharing the big high five with people who are uh patient and 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 porting the v they work to, to umbraco v8 yeah and umbraco is still looking for uh, for feedback because the, the obviously umbraco v8 is still uh, a work under construction yeah uh, and uh, and and the, this feedback is helping the product becoming better and and you've been also involved in in some of those discussions uh do you want to share your point of view of, of the current state or how how you are involved in in, in the thinking about v8 at all sure i mean obviously as having quite a lot of packages v8 is a is a big thing in the horizon to be kind of thinking about so really i guess it's just getting a a, a line of sight on when's best to kind of tackle things so i think there's been a lot of obviously people just installing it kind of poking around having a look at the ui um and it it all seems to work but i think then the message comes across that it's it's looking really great it's looking really solid uh and I don't know whether that's kind of pushing a message that it's going to be, uh, you're going to be able to move to it a lot sooner. So therefore, mm -hmm. from a package developer's perspective, it's just thinking, oh, really, then maybe I've got to move faster as well. And then I think what's kind of happened on the Twitter feeds recently is, is that not pressure, but that kind of fear um, within the package developers that we need to be getting up uh, and and working on V8, uh, and then we've obviously attempted to do that, and things aren't where we were hoping or expecting them to be, um, and things just still in flux, which is not a bad thing for for V8. I think it's just in terms of the message of how how that gets across. So I completely agree with kind of uh, what Niels is tweeting. Like he, he did a big tweet today about perfectionism versus kind yeah. of uh, getting it out there, um, and totally agree with that but i think there also needs to, uh, to be a message that goes alongside that with expectations um so if you are going to use it and you can build like simple brochureware websites that don't involve a lot of third-party integrations with packages fantastic uh, but also maybe work with package developers and kind of come up with a, a timeline um, of when is suitable to kind of be tackling the bigger packages to get those over uh, helping us to kind of get rid of that fear uh, but also helping people that want to use those packages to say, well, this is like an approved kind of schedule we're working to, like HQ is still making changes. Uh, we're planning that this is this will be when package development of kind of really big packages is going to start kind of ramping up. Um, so I think it's just down to communication. I don't think anything, anything is particularly bad. It's just as package developers, we've developed a fear now and it's just getting trying to get onto V8 and not, not being what we've, thought it would be at that time but i don't think any of that's a problem it's just working out the ins and outs and and uh communicating effectively yeah and and you said about it, it's scary because there's a load of new apis that you need to learn or um stuff's changed it's not quite where you're expecting it to be but yeah. that said h specifically warren and stefan have done a fantastic job this past week oh yeah of um, making sure that they point people to the right place making sure that they uh, well, Stefan's written three blogs, I think, yeah. on some of the stuff we were confused about. And they've been really active on the Slack as well, chatting with package devs. I know you started a yeah. V8 package devs channel. Um, yeah. There's a V8, there's a few other V8 channels that they're involved in 
talking through topics, ironing out concerns, taking on feedback. Um, so that it's not that HQ is just going, this is the finished product. They are still listening and no. very actively helping. No, and I think there's a there's a risk of seeing like the the discussions on Twitter as being complaining, but it's not. It's just package developers trying it out and asking the questions and saying, well, what what is this? Does this make sense? Um, I think they're the the right conversations to be having. Um, whether it looks from an external perspective as kind of complaining, I'm not sure. But really, we like you need to know what these things are, and like when somebody points out what they are like the blog post from Stefan are really good like mm -hmm. really answer the questions we were having really it's really difficult good. when you be when somebody shares an example and you like you're looking at the example it all makes sense from an example perspective of copying and pasting but you don't understand the concepts or reasoning behind those concepts so it's very difficult mm -hmm. to get those messages across um especially on twitter anyway like yeah. you've not got a lot of characters to try and explain <laughs> complicated <laughs> concepts yeah. but uh, but yeah, it's, I think it's all healthy discussions um, and it's great to see kind of Warren and Stefan kind of uh, taking their own personal responsibility, not responsibility, but taking it on their own backs to kind of share that information and try and get people aware of those concepts. Yeah, I also think that uh, the, the whole separation of for the paths of the content editors path the pa package developer paths and and umbraco developers and agencies path is, is is really great to 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 take a look on that because it's not say, said that umbraco v8 whenever it will be released it's on the same level of uh, i don't know the, the the being advanced product for everyone yeah. uh, from the very beginning and we've been also having th those discussions when it will be possible to be extended when it can be used for the production with the complex packages or e-commerce packages being applied as well. Yeah. And uh, and I, I also f understand this fear because uh, sometimes we as a developers think, will it ever change? Is this API the final product or maybe it's just a partial solution for something, right? And it's yeah. not always easy to be replaced then. I think passions always run high when you're talking about kind of code concepts and what your approaches to code is. Yeah. Um, I think what a lot of the things that look like complaining it's just passion in terms of they really want it to not saying it's not done right but they want that kind of certainty so i think the problem when you're doing package development and apis are changing that's then a, ma a maintenance kind of issue and we all it's difficult kind of maintaining backwards compatibility um so it'd been it would be great if those kind of core apis could be nailed down um it might not be that way but Again, I think the communication would help that of knowing, well, don't even bother trying to do package development right now. Wait till this point when we are expecting the APIs to be kind of ironed out and fleshed out. So, And, and we are all developers who are usually uh, lazy and we don't want to do work <laughs> multiple times, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it would be good to, to just do it once uh, and, and when, whenever it will be uh, yeah. ready. Yeah. And, 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 but you've mentioned V8. We, we've been talking about V8. It's still work in progress, and people are helping in different ways, not by complaining or sharing their feedback, but also doing a lot of work and a lot of help, a yep. lot of fixes. And we wanted to highlight Bjarn, who did uh, one massive yeah. round of fixes. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Uh, it it's, <laughs> it's, it's everything, just, it seems. Yeah, it's, and, he's and, he's and just it, rattling it, through them. It just proves that um, even if it's already V8, it's not perfect yet, right? It's it's still on the road to perfection, and it yep. will be always possible to be fixed and improved. And so, yeah, big high five for for Bjorn for fixing those bugs already and things before releasing the the version of V8. And and speaking about releases of versions, uh, it, it doesn't mean that V7 is dropped. Uh, it also had a, a, a new release this week, uh, and it's a 7.13.2. Uh, which contains some some issues and tasks being fixed and applied. Uh, so it's still also growing, and maybe the tempo is is not so drastic like it was with the community releases last time. But it's it's still there. And uh, I've I've recently updated Umbraco in one of my projects, and I was surprised how many things changed since since the last update. And it wasn't so far long ago, right? So it's it's mm. it's also under under the work. Yeah. Uh, and 
yeah, maybe maybe let's use this uh, this time and this slot to to talk about other work bits which you are not doing because we've been mentioning it a couple of weeks uh, in in a row probably uh, <laughs> that you've become an owner of of the e-commerce solution uh, called Tea Commerce. So today yep. we are not only drinking Umbra coffee but also we are talking about tea in yep. a different uh, way. So maybe maybe some some insights from your side. How 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 was it? After the taking it over, and uh, what's your roadmap, and what you've you've already uh, released some some updates, right, this week? Yeah, so I wanted to make sure that kind of we got a message across in terms of like we are well, we are going to make active kind of progress on that project. So making changes, just making uh, and improving quite a lot of uh, just kind of niggly things. Um, so I just wanted to make a a big kind of initial release of just showing like progress is going to get be made we're gonna uh start tackling these things and and kind of start moving it forward uh we've been huge fans of t-commerce for a long time we've always thought it's the right way of doing e-commerce in umbraco well not necessarily the right way but the the kind of umbraco way of doing e-commerce mm -hmm. um so when uh we'd spoke to anders a while ago and this kind of idea got floated um we were like well we know what we're doing with package development um and we really want to see this kind of project succeed and equally we just had like then the the ideas start to kind of spin up just thinking about where it can go and especially with v8 coming up um just making uh making that kind of almost the go-to package for e-commerce um is kind of one of our goals really um we're still i mean we only really announced this december so we're at like February, we're only a month or two in now. Um, we're just trying to learn the ropes still at this point, just trying to get a, a, a just see what kind of requests are coming in. We're, we're being on the forums and just trying to handle support that way. And just trying to get a feel for things initially before we kind of try and set anything in stone. Um, obviously, our kind of overall um, kind of outline is to, to make it V8 ready. Um, and probably at this point in time, our, our, our goal is keep uh, the current version as it is, but just make all the kind of little improvements that need improving to to kind of solidify it and try and get rid of all the kind of little niggly bugs that have probably just worked the way in over time. Yeah. I, I, you say about getting it V8 ready, you've, you've shown uh, several, over the past few months, several screenshots of some pretty exciting looking things that you're experimenting with, dashboards, way of highlighting important data to uh, the, the merchant a bit, uh, more easily which yeah. which does make me think you're you're gonna you're gonna do really well with making uh making this the best e-commerce solution it could possibly be for Umbraco, Umbraco um on VA. It's, it's exciting. I've not used e commerce in many years, but uh I really look forward to seeing it in kind of six months, twelve months time yeah. and see where it come yeah. The message we've heard is just that people kind of seem to have forgotten about it, um which is a bit of a shame. Um Anders did put a lot of work in and he was always at events kind of promoting it but i guess it it was just uh I, i'm not sure why it just seemed to kind of fall out of people's minds so really um i'm at the moment is just trying to kind of show that inspiration or the the kind of ideas that we've got so the designs and things are all just kind of mock-ups at the moment but i think really it needs to be driven from an editor's perspective and what they're going to see and what it's going to look like uh that's our primary kind of objective at the moment get it looking uh kind of really hot and really along the lines of Umbraco as well. Umbraco has changed so much and improved from a UI UX perspective. Um, it's barely recognizable from like V6 when a lot of the work on T-commerce at the moment was done. <laughs> so there's a lot of kind of improvements that can be made to kind of make it a lot slicker. Um, and mm -hmm. that's where my initial kind of plan is. But then the, after that, um, well, or maybe alongside that when it comes to V8, um, uh kind of architectural improvements as well um my long-term goal is just to kind of align it as much as possible with practices of umbraco so it like say i really want it to be like the umbraco e-commerce as in if you know umbraco then hopefully you'll know e-commerce because we'll try and replicate all the same kind of coding patterns coding styles uh, all the ui ux so it's just trying to make it as kind of seamless as possible and as familiar as possible really the question on everyone's lips is, when is it being renamed to Yorkshire Tea Commerce? Uh, <laughs> not until V8, at least. 
<laughs> yeah, I just wanted to share the the the, the change log, which be, which was released after the the, the last uh, update, and yeah, it contains a lot of work already put there. But as you've said, it was already a great product, right? Yeah. It was. It, it's it's it, it's not something like what it's getting rebuilded or or changed, but yeah. it's it's just a great product which is getting better and better with every release. And and I think that it's great to hear that you will continue the mission and also the promotion of the product being yeah. an almost an integral integral part of Umbraco as an e-commerce tool of choice, right? Which is which is great yeah. to hear. And Kalum, I, I I see the another tab uh, here, which is uh, <laughs> a result of your work from 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 this week, and not only because you've been talking about this package for a long time, if I remember. It is, it, in actual fact, I wrote most of this code about eighteen months ago, and yeah. it's just the first time I've packaged it up. But uh, it was a big bugbear of mine um, that this fixes. So effectively, if you have a a picker like the multi node tree picker, and it returns multiple items, yeah. then you set it to only ever return one item because it's got some features that maybe other pickers don't have. Then you always had to first or default and null check your value before you could use it and then yeah. cast it to models, build a model. And it's just a bit painful. So this does all of that for you, buries it. Same with nested content. So if you only ever um if you only ever want one item, it will only return you the single yeah. items. Um and it works nicely with models builder too. So uh, no more casting. Your nested content items come out as a list of the type that they are. Yeah, um, yeah it's all it's all pretty straightforward. I encourage people to give it a go. It's I installed it on a um, I installed it on a site and just ran it over some models builder models and it changed a ton of stuff because it's just based off the doc type configuration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Changed a ton of stuff. It just means your views are a bit cleaner, controllers can be a bit cleaner, less yeah. code. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great solution. And also, we've mentioned that uh, James South shared his uh, uh, tweet about uh, having a huge part of this code doing the same t uh, transcription and translation to the type strongly typed objects on the U uh, UMB mapper package. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a lot of people asked him to to document it because it was not so easy to be f seen from from the way how it's usually used as a mapper. Uh, so that's that's a great to also see that there are a lot of other op options and opportunities to use the same approach. But it's always cleaner if you have something strongly typed. So that's that's a great to see and column great work, I think. Yeah, yeah. great work. Thanks. Uh, from other releases, we also had the Kevin's Jumps uh, translation manager being updated uh, this week, and uh, the intranet solution from uh, from U Intra uh, also got a, a new update, uh, which is which was released on uh, February sixth. And uh, yeah, we can probably jump to, to another topic, which is a great topic of a new script release. And uh, guys, did you did you have the chance to to read all of those two great articles this week? Not fully. I've been halfway through kind of Tim's so far. Um, yeah, I, I read Tim's. It was a brilliant article. I, yeah. I remember speaking with him when I was up at the Leeds meetup about this topic. And uh, I know he tweeted a few yeah. weeks ago as well. Does anyone want to see a talk on this or anything? Um, but it's, yeah, really, really fantastic. Uh, uh, nice eye opening story about, you know, how we should look after ourselves and how our time is actually quite important. Mm. Um, it's really quite open. I mean, I think he's mentioned in like in conversations before about like his uh, cancer in the past, but I guess mm -hmm. you just don't really kind of realize until kind of it's all written down like how close it was sort of thing. So yeah, inspirational to read. Yeah, yeah and, and Mike post is similar to his UK Fest talk, I believe, on responsible animations, which has gone down well. I've not actually given it a proper read. I want to dive into some of the code and because I don't do that much front end really anymore. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. Need to, need to play around with that. Yeah, great, great, great articles. And to to refer to the uh, team's article, I, I I read it really carefully, and and there are there is a lot of lessons to 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 apply to our lives. And and recently we've lost a great Ambrosian uh, from from Poland as well. My my ex co-founder Pavel passed away because of a leukemia, and that's also eyes opening, and it opened a lot of. Uh, my mindsets uh, to 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 on on what we should really focus at some time and yeah. and how how we should uh, i don't know spend our time more efficient that's that's all about my snowboarding things and more of that <laughs> uh, so yeah work is not 
too too important if if it comes to really life goals etc so that's something what really inspires to changes and a, a lot of other steps to be taken so read yeah. those articles and if you want to technical bits uh, animations as well great article by mike and uh, lessons learned and we will get team sooner or later right to discuss it maybe uh, in more depth uh, okay, yeah. so uh, the next the next topic is is you profile, and uh, it was released uh, this week as well, uh, on February first, uh, last Friday. And I don't know if you've mentioned that we probably didn't mention that column, right? Uh, last week, I think, yeah, uh, I think it might have come out after we we'd gone on there. Yeah, so so Nita from from the Mumbai uh, Ambraco group, which is pretty new on the map uh, of Ambraco activities, was awarded of uh, U Profile in February, and that's that's uh, that's um, I I think that it's also a great pointer to what's going on in their community, how this community is is growing and and becoming more visible uh, in this area of the world, and I've seen one of my favorite books here as well, uh, and and yeah, a lot of other activities. Uh, so. Go and check uh, Nitya's profile and uh, learn more about uh, Navi Mumbai Ambraco Meetup Group in India. That's I saw I saw it. You sent some uh, nice T-shirts and things over as well. Yeah, just posting on Twitter. Yeah, and and I, we are always bumped with Ismail saying, "Yeah, mention something more about <laughs> India's group. Do do that." And uh, they were awarded by by you, Profile. That's that's great because it's, it's as I've said, it's just showing that something's going on, and not all only in the areas which are pretty uh, normal for a lot of us here, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So next topic, and of course, once one one more uh, uh, connection with you, Matt. Uh, Code Cabin. Code yeah. Cabin. Uh, this week, uh, you've also announced that uh, you are opening the the, the forms uh, for people to apply to the next edition. Do you want yeah. to say more uh, about this th this edition for the, in particular? Um, I, it's uh, going to follow along the same lines as kind of previous events. So we just think it's a really good pattern. Uh, we this is our fourth year, so it's we're getting quite good at kind of. Um, nailing the format um, and uh, we just think it really works well it's it's kind of inspired a little bit by the retreat and then the open circle as well which is usually um, a code garden but it's I think we've just seen the value we've seen it in other kind of circles uh, where just bringing people together not necessarily with kind of schedules in mind but uh, uh, as in a, a talk schedule um, just bring people together and get them to kind of form their own discussions so we kind of try and formalize it a little bit so we'll what we tend to do is uh everybody who uh we kind of accept us to come along we'll create a trello board get them all to kind of pitch in ideas and and kind of group them and create kind of discussion topics that fill out the couple of days that we're going to be there uh still with plenty of time like downtime just to kind of networks again i think that's really important and we just bring people together to have discussions and share knowledge um in quite an open way and i think it's just a unique kind of um event within the community because i think even with conferences there's an ability to kind of go there and kind of disappear into the background whereas this is a lot more personal a lot more um Kind of friendship building there's, it's very difficult to kind of go there and and not kind of get chatting and talking to people so it's just yeah. a really great way of um uh getting to know getting into the community like asking questions speaking to people um and it's worked really well the last few years so we're going to keep trying to do it as, as long as we can yeah. twitter has been ablaze with um <laughs> with all kinds of comments <laughs> from people so this is awesome <laughs> What's, yeah. what's really what's really good for us is that all the last all the last attendees are our best marketing. Like, <laughs> yeah, we, exactly. We we kind of announce it, but then it's it, it's almost left to our kind of past attendees to market it. And like, it's, it's just really good to go to events and everybody's wearing the Code Kevin T-shirts. And yeah, uh, yeah. Every time we we launch it, it's one of those things. It's hard to sell because there's no schedule like initially up front. But the value is kind of still really immense. The amount of knowledge that's in people that don't necessarily want to talk at events or are, like aren't there yet, to kind of do a, an actual presentation at events, but are really yeah. happy to kind of sit down in small groups and have chats. And like the amount of knowledge these people have is uh, is untapped, and it's it's just a nice way of kind of uh, tapping into that. 
Yeah. So, so just just to um, uh, sum summarize that uh, you've opened the forms uh, yeah. to to apply, and when till when you are collecting the the inquiry? Uh, it is the is it the fifth of July? It should be on the bottom. July. I yeah, think. July. So it's yeah. it's it's a lot. It's a lot of time. People were just uh, 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 scared that it's it's a short period of time. So now still you have a lot of time to to adjust your uh, plans and 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 uh, just find a way yeah. to to apply and be yeah. there. Uh, yeah. That's that's a great event to 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 follow. And yeah. obviously, a uh, great place on the map of Umbraco events across the globe. Uh, great to see that it's it's coming once again. And speaking about events, we cannot mention not mention uh, more announcements about Code Garden. Uh, so it's still mm. um, it's still uh, it's still being worked on. Uh, some new speakers were announced this this week, and also the great blog article yeah. what to expect from uh, from Code Garden for, for not only for new people but also for people who are attending Code Garden already uh, because the this vision shows that it's still evolving, it's still changing, and still becoming a different and bigger and better event uh, in in time. And we we can always uh, refer also to the new speakers being announced. And Callum, we even we are even here in this article. That's <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> across, across the dancing horses and and, and other people here so yeah feel free uh, go and read this article if you haven't been on code garden go and read it if you've been there and you are considering going and uh yeah new speakers uh new website and uh, uh discount runs out in uh, two weeks so still uh some money is possible to be saved if you are uh, considering going to code garden and guys are you coming to code garden yep oh yeah yeah, that's, we'll that's great. And and this lineup is growing and growing, and a lot of great people from Umbraco community, and not only Umbraco community is 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 revealed here. Um, mm -hmm. Emma, uh, Carol, and and Fedosia from oh, yeah. who were yeah. mentioned who we were mentioning multiple times uh, in our Umbraco office. Some people from outside of Umbraco community, such as Dean. Barker, who who is a great influencer in in terms of uh, CMS, and not only, and of course other representatives here. And 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 uh, I haven't seen the talk by Rachel Andrew yet, but I saw a lot of tweets about her uh, uh, talks in the past, and I'm I'm probably uh, f uh, interested in in attending her talk this year as well. Cool. Uh, and Callum Ambraco Spark, do we want to mention? Uh, Still open for talks, right? Still open for speakers, yeah. and uh, oh, yeah. I, so I, I, I didn't think see that. Only four. I think only four of the announced. Yeah, I didn't see that yet, but uh, it's great to see uh, the You are speaking, I think this... Lee, Pete, T Steve. Yeah. I think this this was announced last week after we went on air, but uh, yeah, there's the four of us are, are speaking, and then there's still. This track two, which is a little bit more community focused, show off stuff you've been working on. Um, interesting. So apply. It's the twenty second of March in Bristol. Yeah. Uh, and speaking about community, uh, Owen uh, released a new community corner with uh, Niels, a uh, new member of Umbraco community. Uh, just let me share it for a while. So yeah, a community corner is back. Feel free to check the, the Niels's profile. Uh, Niels is software developer and is using Umbraco for six months already. Uh, and uh, the last part which we wanted to highlight during today's Umbraco offer is a content apps challenge. And content apps is in general. Uh, more, more, a lot of people is saying are saying that the content apps will change the way how Umbraco uh, is used by developers and and content editors, and they are uh, considered as a big thing. And there is a great article uh, by, by by Jacob about content apps in general, and Jacob uh, revealed the the winner. Uh, of of the content apps, apps challenge, uh, which is uh, Nathan Wolf, uh, who created the pre-flight content app, right? And uh, did you guys check mm -hmm. the, the the content app, uh, which won the challenge? I've not tried it yet, but from I didn't realize how much work he'd already put into it. Like I yeah. thought these things were probably going to end up being like proofs of concept, um, just to show what is possible, but by the sounds of what's in that blog post, he's kind of done quite a lot on that project. So it's quite yeah, interesting. Yeah. Pretty, pretty advanced impressive. already, yeah. yeah. He said it was something, that we'll have to get this from him at some point, but he said it was something he'd uh, built for V7 and then ported over to V8 right. and then kind of 
packaged up as a nice content app. Yeah. So um, it looks fantastic. I asked him if there'll be a if there'll be a NuGet download at some point because it's it's on our and on GitHub. But um, yeah, give it a play. I've I've not tried it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were also mentioning last time that we are curious about uh, the entries for the contest itself. And we can see that there were some great, great uh, examples of usage of content apps already. So Google Analytics integration uh, done by Anders Bjerner. Uh, it's a great example of content app. And as, as, as we've said, the first thing which comes to my mind, uh, to our minds usually is about content and integration with analytics tools. Uh, so great to see that. And also the image uh, filter content app, which we have been in pleasure of seeing earlier, uh, and uh, mm. that's a great, I think, the the beginning of work for the for the possibilities in the content app because a lot of editors wants to um, change or adjust their images whenever they are working on 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 media files in Abraco. And we've been also talking with Callum about uh, and and, and uh, Paul about the uh, ability of Instagram filters on top of the images uh, to have a presets of filters because not everyone is so keen in in in, in uh, specific metrics changes. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah, that's that's great to see. And other example, some fun examples that were also uh, revealed and uh, media puzzle uh, content app. I don't know if you uh, had a chance to see that. Uh, so it's a puzzle game for editors being bored at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and uh, one one more uh, integration with a great uh, engine to create uh, games <laughs> in HTML5. <laughs> so Space Invaders content app, uh, also done by Paul Seal. Uh, <laughs> great fun, great example, and it just proves how how big and wide spectrum of things can be done within Umbraco and content apps uh, in V8. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So a, a lot of things, a lot of topics, and so we are once again uh, uh, late in our time frames. <laughs> so so <laughs> sorry, sorry, people, for taking your Friday uh, uh, noon. Uh, guys, do you want to add anything else to to, to those topics? Uh, just uh, get to Code Cabin website and apply. We want people to come along. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from us, uh, nothing more. A lot of things are going on. We are really curious what's, what will be revealed in the next week because we can see each other on the next Friday. Yes. Right? So yeah, th thanks, Matt, for joining us. No uh, thanks, Callum. And thank you all for being so active in the chat. We need to catch it up and see you <laughs> next Friday. Cheers. Bye. Bye.